This is Brad Kaler, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. For I continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Today we're going to discuss vital life force science. Often we invent ourselves in our head. But what about Trump? Christian oxymoron exposed. Restorative justice. PMS versus PMS. 84. And why do we call it PMS? Because from God's perspective, He created us physical, P, M, mentally, so that we could communicate proper, and an S with a spiritual side. However, Satan, who always wants to contradict like Trump and always wants to imitate like Trump, he uses PMS for politics, money, and of course, spirituality or religion in order to control people. So the question is, Trump vices vital life signs. What does it mean, a vital life sign? That means that you are alive. You're supposed to have something moving in you that will help you to stay alert, to be involved, to have compassion. Now, the question is, why are we facing such a confusion in the body of Christ, but also in the political side? We're looking at the Republicans. I don't want to say weirdos, but the Republicans, they are very confused about what they are doing. They are voting for a president, a would-be president, that screws everyone, that looks down on everyone, and manipulates everyone, and yet they want him as their president. They do not accept the fact that somebody has been property properly chosen by the public and now they have the consequences what is happening are we talking end time a favorite subject of many going to a final war but what about the war that is raging inside of you let's check out what we will find We're talking about the vital signs, life signs. We're talking about, is there a spark to really live? Trump's vital life signs are often a challenge. And the founding fathers, when they started with the United States of America, I understand that many people have so their different op uh, options. Some say, well, it is an incorporated business. The United States is no longer a republic. But the founding fathers concerned themselves with any tyranny. They just came out of the old English style and they wanted to be free. Freedom for everyone. And they relied on laws like the separation of powers, creating shifting majorities and harnessing self-interests towards mutual advancement. In other words, everybody was supposed to be free. Self-interest is not a Christian virtue. Yet, with President Donald Trump and his cast of psychopaths and co-conspirators, it's a rare thing. All seven deadly sins on display at once. And why am I saying this? The body of Christ is supposed to be following the narrow way, the narrow path, the way, the truth, and the light. It is the enabler, the body of Christ, and evangelicals that basically are holding and upholding Trump, a man that has proven to be a moron, a man that has proven to be totally contradictory, everything that is not Trump is against him and yet 
the body of Christ in all its foolishness is following a man that they think is going to bring them to the end time. Well, you don't have to have a drunk driver sitting behind the wheel and your kids all packed in that car to wonder if they will come home safely. Because they won't. Something is about to happen. And the same with you folks. I am not an American. And when I talk, I talk out of concern. Concern for the body of Christ. There are two and a half to three billion believers, they claim. Somewhere, somehow, numbers that are astronomical. There are billions more that are affected by the Christian holidays and the seasons and whatever we generate it. But the question is, why are we so confused? Often we invent ourselves in our head because we want to be better. We want to look better or we want to smell better. And so therefore we do certain things. Even when I make those videos, I make sure that I wash my hair, my hair is curly, so otherwise it will be this big. And so my hair is done. I shave myself. I want to have a proper impression. And so it is with you. But why is the body of Christ making such a fool out of themselves? Can you answer that question? Why are you making such a fool out of yourself? The body of Christ, particularly in the United States, choosing the majority, choosing President Trump, former President Trump. I feel sorry for you folks. Now, by now, some of you might know when we talk about the body of Christ, we're talking about believers in general. I'm not picking out one over another. Because the Jewish people are as much believers as Christians and Muslims. They have one thing in common. They all believe in one God. They are praying to one God. But if you really dissect it, there are seven deadly sins. I know under the Muslim community there are differences there. They might have a an, an different restriction on the deadly sins. But among the Jewish people and the, the Christians, the people that claim the Jewish book as part of their Bible, there are seven deadly sins, also known as capital vices, a cardinal sin are groupings and classifications of vices within the Christian teachings, although not mentioned in the Bible. They are talked about certain issues, behaviors or habits are classified under the category if they directly give rise to other immoralities. According to the standard list, they are pride, greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony, and sloth, contrary to the seven heavenly virtues. One thinks of these sins often as abuses or excesses of natural faculties of passions. So if you're in France and you fall in love with a woman and that woman happens to be married or somebody claim has a claim on her, you can get in a fight, a passionate fight, and kill someone. They will treat that different. But we are talking here on the Christian values. From the King James Bible, we have here Proverbs 6, for 16 to 19. These six things does the Lord hate. Seven are an abomination about unto him. A proud look a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that defies wicked imaginations or schemes, feet swift in running to mischief, and false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. They call them also the seven deadly sins. Now greed 
is the motivating vector in Trump li Trump's life. In his pre-political days, he was only greedy for money and fame. Now, as a president, he is still cheap for gas. And when I say gas, I don't mean gas, but cash. While in office, he indicates he never is willing to acknowledge constitutional limits on his power. Vainglorious or pride, Trump's ego drives him. He has consistently inconsistent with policies and ideas, but his commitment to Donald Trump is absolute. Wrath. When Trump's anger flares up, he is his own worst enemies, yet his staff cannot seem to rein in the most wrathful impulses. A sloth. When a President McConnell, you probably could have gotten, so if we would have gotten a President called Donald or Mr. McConnell, you probably could have gotten a health care bill passed, yet Trump did not do the work. Trump did not do the work when it came to the pandemic. 450,000 people died, more than in the World War, Second World War, First, First World War, the different fights and everything going on. Yet Trump is more concerned why he cannot be hanging on to a second term. Trump did not do the work. Despite claiming that he has little time to watch TV, aides say that he is fixated continuously on cable news programs and often tweets responses to Fox and friends in real time. President Obama. Slamming President Obama often about golf habits, Trump spent 22% of his days as president at his golf properties. Now he said make a salary, but each trip, depending which um, territory he goes to, which golf course he goes to that he owns himself, they charge the White House one and a half to three and a half million dollars. Now, if you look at the fact that he spent over 150 million dollars on golfing. Trump's slow pace of legislation might be an excellent place to start. Gluttony or the lack of self-control. Trump loves KFC, well done steak with ketchup and beautiful chocolate cake. He had a Coke button. All he had to do was press that stupid button and there came. They came running with his whatever drink he had. The evidence of his gluttony extends his greed and lust for power. He not only wants power, but he also cannot get enough of it. Never enough money. Never enough women. Never enough wives like all gluttons. Folks, it is a sad, sad scenario. Leaving a mess in his wake, discarded bones. There are discarded workers and ruined investors. People lost billions of dollars. He went bankrupt over five times that we know of. Yet he claims he's a billionaire. Banks are after him, other people are after him. Just before he became inaugurated for president, he had to be bailed out for $1.8 billion. And somebody did that by the name of Mr. Schultz. A shame, a great shame. So we have to deal with one thing, Trump's inability to control his impulses. He will not listen to lawyers. <clears throat> he will not listen to his wife's cyberbullying initiative. The more he lets his instincts rule, the less he governs in effectively. Lust, which leads to lust from 
Playboy, past to Howard Stern's interviews, boasting he would date his own daughter because she looked so good if she was not his relative. His own daughter. Trump sells an image laced with passion. Forget about his usual focus of, of love. We heard about his libido and the gross excesses to which he thinks himself entitled in that regard. In Trump's case, he claims other people's victories as his own. Yet, as he runs from responsibility when an ally loses. Envy. Trump's Twitter trendoms expose jealousy for his rifles and a constant attempt to measure up to them. A sin that emerges from both his business dealings and his presidency is a sloth. None of his businesses ever made anything except money. Henry Ford, he built cars. Thomas Edison, he invented things. And Trump, he is a PR guy, selling only himself, a carnival banker who struck it rich. Because daddy only gave him $543 million on his estate when he passed away. With all Trump's accomplishments, such as they are, why would he be envious? You do not need a psychology degree to recognize certain insecurities in how he continuously tried to compare himself favorably with his predecessors. In the past five months, he has averaged a Twitter mention of Obama in 2.4 tweets per day. The number of times he mentioned Obama in 2019 has gone up significantly over 2018. It must be an envy, because it is not very smart. With all the non-stop drama surrounding his White House, who does not feel in yearning for the no-drama Obama? Greed. I don't do it for the money, Trump claims in his opening to the art of the deal. I do it to do it. Every piece of evidence contradicts that claim. Trump cares about money a lot. His greed is damaging. His presidency as lawsuits and ethics violations rack up. Greed long a motivating factor in Trump's life. Yet since becoming president, he has added greed and lust for power. For his long-time pursuit of money and fame and his passion for women. The author mentions in passing that horrible tape where Trump in 2005 stated he grabbed women by their sensitive parts. And no mention is made about some 23 women who since 1980 have accused Trump of various types of sexual misbehavior, including rape. Young kids, folks. That is why he is so concerned about his tax returns. Because in his tax returns, you can read that he writes off $17 million payments for having sex with 13, 14 year old kids. And you think he is the man that will lead you to the end time. He is a disaster, he will be a disaster, and he continues to be a disaster. The evidence of gluttony is an extension of his greed and lust for power. He not only wants power, but he also can't get enough of it. Never enough money, never enough women, never enough wives. Like all gluttons, he leaves a mess in his wake. And now we come to the deadliest seven sin. So there are seven deadly sins. And the last one is pride. I alone, he claims. I can fix it. He famously said, at the Republican National Convention. The examples are too numerous to count. What astounding is that Trump's pride is the pride of a con man. He is proud 
of his ability to make people think he is a man of abilities when he is a man of few gifts beyond those who associate with showmanship. One reason pride is so deadly is because it is impossible to attend to the opposite virtue. If we are greedy, we can seek to be more generous. If we are gluttons, we can concentrate on becoming more you know, absent so that we stay away from it. But if you try and focus on being humbler, it melts like a snowflake in your hand when you attend to your humility. We learn humility on the hand and heart and fall of suffering. See, that is how you learn when you suffer, when you go through hardships, like this pandemic. For many, this is a terrible situation. For the workers, the doctors, the medical section, the nurses, the support, the ambulances, the men that are standing right and ready when police and fire men are ready. There's so many involved because Trump decides that it is more important to worry about him doing a second term than 450,000 people that die. God in his providence casts us to make us humble. Let us hope that Mr. Trump will come to know humility. In his impeachment process, it did not work. He now thinks he is Mr. King Kong because he beat it. But he didn't beat it. He screwed people. He again threatens people. And now that McConnell spoke out against him, he is now against McDonald. Folks, what are you doing? Why are you so caught up with a loser like him? He lost his office. He lost the party line. He lost everything. Yeah, what about his soul? You see, all American presidents have fallen failings. We know that. For the human, I am human. You are human. We all have a major flaw or a flaw. Yet yeah, a startling truth about Donald Trump's profound moral abnormality, despite all his forerunning failings, it would be a mistake to label any of them as evil. Yet yeah, Trump, he is evil. A few definitions of evil are profoundly immoral and wicked, and something that brings sorrow, trouble, or destruction. Doesn't that fit Trump? But what about the enablers? You, the body of Christ. I'm not focusing on, on Trump because Trump is an enemy. I personally don't care because the Bible says, love your enemy. I care about you folks. The folks that are enabling. Are those your new morals? Your leader, you followed him, you are as brute, you shoot, you kill, you maim, you destroy. Are we going back three, four, five hundred years because you choose Mr. Trump as your leader? There's a saying, tell me who your five closest friends are and I will tell you who you are. You chose Trump, does that mean you are also fallen? Folks, you were Americans. You are Americans, true patriots. Men that love God, love their family, love their freedom. You came and set an example in the world. And now, what have you done? In less than four years time, Trump destroyed that whole picture. I am so sorry for you guys. I feel so sorry. You Americans, don't you have any pride? See, when I talk about pride, it's the healthy pride. It's good to be proud of something you accomplished, but not excessive. There is nothing wrong 
of doing the best to the best of your ability, but doing it with love, to stretch yourself, to be able to help those that are weak, those that have problems, those that need your help, your concern, that is good. But what about the leadership of the enablers? Those that said, let's go and vote for Trump because thus says the Lord and God said no word to them. Folks, I've shared with you often, as I'm going to do again, that tough times never last, but tough people do. You gotta have a foundation and your foundation is screwed up because if this is the only ability you have to vote for a pig that lives like a pig and you dress him up and put him in the White House, he is still a pig. And you guys want that? This is your upline, the guy that you look up to, the guy that you want to be like? Then I am sorry for the United States because it is time to repent. Where are all the believers? Is this what you desire your kids to be? You are running towards a disaster. When we're talking about Israel, keep things focused. Israel was the first place where God revealed a plan. It's called restorative justice, where God and mankind, humanity, would be united again. We would be in the presence of God. Instead of God, you choose Satan. Because the characteristics of Satan is exactly what Trump is doing. Yes, folks, Trump couldn't care less. If you do not speak in his favor like I don't, then I'm his enemy. You are his enemy. Are you scared to share what you truly think that you should be following the path or should be following the Broadway? Become a Trumper. Become an idiot. Become a moron. And therefore, your country is going down the drain unless you want to do something. Change, folks. Change is nothing wrong with. It's called repentance. Coming and becoming aware of what you have done. You goofed up. It's a big deal. You got caught up in the moment. It happens. We are all humans. But there is a loving father that says, Come, my son. Come, my daughter. I love you. God wants you. Now, and if Trump happens to be in one of his moods and he starts all of a sudden realizing that, Oh, I was wrong. But I can't ask forgiveness because only losers do that. Then let me ask you, become a loser. Because when you lose your stupid attitude, when you lose that ignorance, when you lose all that baloney around you, you become a winner. Because the moment you repent and acknowledge that you were wrong, you will be picked up in the arms of the Father, Abba. And that is what the Jewish people got first. But they ignored it. And then the Christians, there were no Christians. The followers of Yeshua, they were not called Christians. Jesus was not a Christian. Jesus was the first one that got restorative justice right because he fulfilled the law of God. And in his love, God said, now, this is the way, the truth and the light that I want you to do. Follow that. Why did God say that? Because his presence is there. Now we can be united, reunited with the Father. But if you take the broad way, you follow Trump, you go to the Christian churches, then don't you realize that Christianity was only created 325 A.D.? That is 325 years after Jesus. And why the changes? Because a man like Trump, at that time he was Emperor Constantine I, said, I become a Christian. But I want you to do this, this and this. And he merged the paganism with the followers of Yeshua. And those that did not abide by the order that the degree of the 
Constantine, the Emperor Constantine the First, they got killed and thrown before the lions. And maybe you will find a hard time when you refuse to do what Trump wants. But praise God, you will be more than overcoming because God will protect you. He will guide you. He will direct you. But if this is the way you want to go, folks, I am warning you. Prayer Kayla, PhD, tough times never last. Tough people, they do. Bless your heart.